On his historic trip to Ireland in 1963, five months before he was killed, President John F. Kennedy made clear how much his Irish Catholic heritage meant to him as the first U.S. president elected from a minority group. As JFK said on this trip, when my great-grandfather came to America, the Irish Americans had a song about the familiar sign which went, No Irish Need Apply. In 1960, the American people took down the sign from the last place it was still hanging, the door of the White House. In The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, author Thomas Mayer examines how the cultural forces of religion, ethnicity, and their immigrant roots influenced this remarkable family. Rather than some Camelot fable about so-called American royalty, this groundbreaking book shows just how much of the Kennedy story, both in their public actions and private lives, was deeply affected by their Irish Catholic immigrant background. There are many surprises to be found in The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, published by Basic Books and now available in hard, soft cover, as well as audio. These blockbuster findings include revelations about the Kennedy secret deal in Vatican, the first documented account of Jackie Kennedy's private grief and thoughts of suicide following her husband's assassination in 1963, as well as a historical re-examination of how John F. Kennedy's little-known book, A Nation of Immigrants, found, wound up changing so much of today's America. Here's a brief recap of the news coverage surrounding The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings by Thomas Mayer. America's Emerald Kings investigative journalist Thomas Mayer takes a look at this family's Irish Catholic heritage and how it shapes their decisions. And Thomas Mayer, good morning to you. Thank you for having me. It's a thick book, it's a long book, and you made revelations, and many would think, what else is there left to uncover? You approach this in a different way. Explain. Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, people look at the Kennedys as a Camelot royalty story, but in many ways, it's the story of the Irish in America, the story of immigrants in America. We close tonight with an unprecedented insight into the hidden feelings and the private agony of the late First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. Forty years after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the world got a look today at some letters written by his widow. And it looks like the father was a pack rat. He saved everything. <laughs> he sure did. Journalist Thomas Mayer first wrote about the letters in the diary in a new book on the Kennedys. I remember her as a beautiful, courageous woman behind this black veil. These papers, these letters, this exchange between Jackie Kennedy and the priest really showed the, the uh, private side. If you share your deepest feelings with a spiritual advisor, should they ever share them with anyone else? We ask because nearly 40 years ago, after the assassination of President John Kennedy, his widow, Jacqueline Kennedy, turned to a family priest for comfort and advice. What she told him is shocking. It is also part of a new book. The strength and courage that she showed to the world then was apparently not all that was in her heart. I think in many ways these papers are a window into the soul of Jackie Kennedy and exactly what she was thinking and how she was trying to come to grips with this tragedy. Thomas Mayer was researching material for his book on the Irish Catholic heritage of the Kennedy family, the Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, when a family representative referred him to a priest who had counseled family members following the assassination. The priest was Father Richard McSorley. Very shortly into my conversation with Father McSorley, he also indicated that he had counseled Jackie Kennedy after the assassination. And it was very clear that it was a very extraordinary chapter in American history, uh, the exchange between this priest and the bereaved First Lady.
President John F. Kennedy was assassinated almost 40 years ago, but time has done little to reduce the public's fascination with him and the Kennedy family. And now a new book called The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, examines the family's immigrant roots and their strong ties to the Catholic Church. And it was written by Thomas Mayer. It's gotten wonderful reviews. Congratulations Thank on you the very book. Much. It's interesting because the perspective you approach the Kennedys with is not the Camelot American political royalty perspective. You look at them as Irish immigrants and how that affects uh, the five generations of Kennedys. Why that approach? Well, I, I think it's a much more accurate approach. I think that the Kennedys, in many ways, reflect the story of America, the story of immigrants coming to this country, trying to achieve. Uh, John F. Kennedy's election as president fundamentally meant a barrier was broken to the, to, uh, the White House. Uh, and in many ways, they've opened up the door for this new wave of immigrants in this country. So I, I think in many ways, it's a much more accurate reflection of what the Kennedy story means. Well, it's very interesting as, as we look at a, a picture of the Kennedy family there and that you got cooperation from many family members. Everything was on the record. Mm -hmm. And yet you come up with some blockbuster revelations. Mm -hmm. in the A new book about the Kennedys recaptures some of the grief, shock, and even the despair caused by the killing. The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, also contain some surprising revelations. Holazan talked with the author, Thomas Mayer. The Kennedys, the CIA, and the Vatican. Connect the dots for us tonight. In many ways, it's the, uh, the big secret that the Kennedys never let known. It's the uh, relationship between the Kennedys and the Vatican particularly Joe Kennedy, the patriarch of the, of the family, and that went on for about 30 years. What was the most revealing example of, of one of the secret dealings that, that you confirmed took place between the Vatican, the Kennedys, and the CIA? Sure. Well, the, there's a number of different letters, but the one that really caught my eye was a letter that Joe Kennedy writes from Florida to, to the right-hand man, Galeazzi, the right-hand man of the Pope, Count Galeazzi, in Rome. And basically he says, uh, it's 1958, and he says, uh, I uh, just got a, a, uh, uh, a visit, I just had a visit from Alan Dulles, who was then the CIA director, and he thinks that Jack, my boy, Jack, is going to be the next States, and he's very interested in, in helping us out, or, you know, being interested in this, and uh, what Joe Kennedy does is offer to be a liaison between the CIA and the Vatican. Had that type of letter been known by somebody like Richard Nixon, uh, Jack Kennedy's opponent in 1960. John Kennedy would never would have become president. Exactly. Anniversary of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy last weekend, and with that milestone comes a new book examining the foundation of the Kennedy clan, its Irish Catholic roots. And joining me today is the author of that book. It is called The Kennedys, America's Emerald Kings, and welcome to Thomas Mayer. It's very much a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for Also having a Newsday reporter, and I understand this took you four years to put together. Lots of research went into it, and the book really delves into the history of the family. Tell about your trip to Ireland. Yeah, well, we had a great time. This is about three years ago, and um, I, I really think to understand the Kennedys in America, one of the things that you have to understand is what happened to the Kennedys in Ireland. So the first three or four chapters of the book tells the story of, of the famine, the, the backdrop of, of what was going on for the Kennedys. One of the big surprises is that the Kennedys in Ireland were members of the old IRA, part of the whole move for independence against Great Britain. So yeah. to understand that feeling, it, it, it very much infused itself in the Kennedys here in America. I think we even have have a picture of JFK with some of the women in right. his family and was it a Mary Kennedy who was IRA member. Yeah, exactly. She was a member of Kumar Nabang, which was the women's auxiliary of, of the IRA. Jack Kennedy, when he becomes president of the United States, he insists on coming back. A few months before he gets killed, he goes to Ireland. In fact, President Kennedy described it as the best time of his presidency. Hmm, you can imagine. I mean, he was heralded as such the Emerald Isle <laughs> sure King was. when he returned there. There is an impression in Washington that there are no Kennedys left in Ireland, that they're all in Washington. Because we didn't catch the boat. Okay. 